you know, one of the questions I get asked quite often is, I want to build a zero, zero trust architecture. What do I need to think about? Is it an architecture? Is it a journey? Well, how do I make it adaptive? And there's a lot of things we have to think about. Most journeys with zero trust, they always start with identity. And with identity, there's a couple things they're going to think about. Have I integrated my Active Directory into, let's say they're using Ping, or they're using Okta to control access, assess them, authorize them, and then if something happens, I can revoke that access, or I can prompt you know, the user to validate that they are who they are. I can do two-factor authentication before they get access to my services. And a lot of times, they'll take that identity, and then they'll integrate it into their on-prem system. So if you can imagine for a second, this is a headquarters. Maybe this is your corporate office, and in that corporate office, you've got a lot of th different things. You have different types of data. You have PII, you have PHI, maybe you're a healthcare organization, or you, you have a government contract, so you have CUI data and FOUO data. All of it needs to be tagged, controlled, and monitored. And maybe some of that data is in your on-prem version of SharePoint, or maybe that data is in Office 365. We can use identity providers like Okta, like Ping, like SailPoint, and many others to control access to that on-prem network, that to control access to the authentication of 365, SharePoint, on-prem, and other solutions, or maybe a very custom application like Payroll. So maybe there's a custom app for payroll, and we know that the person that we have to verify they're an employee first before we give them access to their payroll information. Now, what's interesting is over time, we've gone from on-prem, and now we've put everything in the cloud. And that let's say that's the sanctioned cloud, meaning sanctioned as in sanctioned by IT that we can use those cloud apps. Those cloud apps might be a 365, might also be Box, <coughs> Instead of payroll on-prem now, I have Workday. And all of that can be controlled, at least for identity, through, you know, through those sanction apps, through, through an identity provider. And as we control that data, we start have to wondering, okay, I've got identity figured out. I know where they're going. I know what data they're, have, they're accessing. But what happens when all of a sudden that user is at home? We now have a, you know, they are now at home and they've got their own endpoint that we've got to figure out. The great thing about the identity provider is we can verify where they're logging in from. Are they logging in from a network we trust at a home or maybe the corporate network or maybe a Starbucks? If they're at Starbucks, do they really need to be accessing payroll, for example? Maybe they do. But in essence, when they're also at home in a remote workforce environment, they've also got other things now. Now they also have a home printer. They also have their own personal email. And they can copy and paste data, in addition to just using USB. So what happens now when you've got to worry not about where they're coming from, not just verifying the endpoint, verifying what data they're accessing, you've got to verify if that user that's at home, is it the user, is it their children, or is it someone pretending to be that user that's actually malicious? And we have to now start looking at a couple different elements. We've got the identity piece, piece figured out. We have to start looking at tagging the data, understanding what applications are accessing, and then what endpoints they're coming from. If we bring all that together, we can actually start looking at the, doing a user entity behavior analysis, meaning we can start monitoring the user and figuring out, is John who John really says they are? Or is it just someone pretending to be John, like their children or, someone, or an ex external threat? But traditional identity, is considered usually as a one-time access. And the word zero trust has originally been, I grant them access to what they need at that time. But what happens if I want to do this continuously? What if I want to make sure it's adaptive? Meaning that as the user's doing things, as they're accessing 365, as they're downloading lots of data or a little bit of data, is it normal for the user John or Alice or Bob to be doing that? Or do we want to actually set the authentication back up to the identity provider and validate that the user is who they say they are? Or do we want to just block them? doing certain things. This is what an adaptive zero trust environment needs to consider. The identity providers, what applications are being access, what's the, not just identity, but what device are they coming from, what location they're coming from, what, is, what did the user do in the last five or 10 minutes? What is, the, is that within the model of the user as you're building an adaptive zero trust environment?